Well, first of all, you know, thanks for sitting down okay. in the middle of this legal event where we have lots of people doing hallway tracks and we're, we're just grabbing time together. Uh, I'm trying to get a flavor of why we're all here. So I wanted to just ask you as an opening question, what brought you into open source legal stuff? Um, I used to be working for Motorola and before I went over to became president to the Freescale. And in order for us to test out the chips that are coming up, we needed to have an operating system. Um, and Apple had just left using PowerPC, and Linux uh, was a reasonable alternative. And so um, some of my lead developers and I sort of sat down and decided, well, okay, let's try it. So we started using it initially for validation of the silicon. And then we were getting the fact that people didn't want to buy the silicon until they actually had an OS to go with it. So we started getting into open source at that point. But we had to move from consuming it to trying to be able to put it out, put it upstream, and enable it upstream. And so we went through that dance. And um, I got to go and start working with the legals and outside people in order to try to make sure that we were following the right practices and figure out how we could be good citizens in the community. So you've been part of it for a ton of time, actually. Oh, yeah. No, I've been part of open source um, since probably the mid, to, like early 2000s. Oh, wow. So you've and seen a I, lot unfold. Oh, yeah. No, I've seen a lot unfold. And I, I was before that, I was using GCC for, again, PowerPC and Apple Network. Right. Way back when, um, you know, into it for... <laughs> A long time from that side too, and so some of the stuff I had been doing proprietary compiler-wise was in IBM. It historically, went into um, some of the GCC open source stuff, so I knew about that, and so I knew how to take advantage of the optimizations. So yeah, I've been around for a long time, I'm afraid. <laughs> well, it's a good thing because my next question is: What's the most interesting development in open source legal affairs you've seen? And given that you've got oh, like 15, um, 20 years in the it, open, the, the greatest development in open source legal. Good question. Probably, um, probably the collaboration is actually happening between the lawyers in this type of FSV event um, that replicates what happens with developers on the software side and the project side. Right. That having that form for mutual communication and, grow and sharing and growing of information, I think it's been tremendously empowering and having a safe space to talk. Um, so, from that side, that the legal side has probably made the biggest difference. And how about what's coming next, you know, next 12, 24 months? Is there anything that you think we should have on our radar? Yeah, automating the compliance stuff and getting up rid of the legal debt. <laughs> we have to, we, if it's software, we have technical debt. Yeah. And licensing, we have legal debt right now. That's we a have really licensing good debt. Um, and the sense that uh, a lot of... Um, there's an element of everyone sort of tries to hide from it. Yeah. And oh, I'm going to take the path of least risk, and the problem keeps growing and growing and growing. And we need to, and we basically need to uh, bring the discipline that software and scanning and analysis do to it, and make it so that we can improve the quality by letting the machines take care of the manual stuff that we're doing now. I'm fascinated by that comment of legal debt because technical debt has been something that's widely acknowledged and accepted. It's the first time I've heard the term legal debt. And it immediately fits that mental model. You know, you really, you grok it straight away. Yeah, and right now, um, we're finally seeing some open source tooling emerge to do scanning um, that's trying to detect the licenses. And so it needs to become a partnership between the developers and the legal teams in order to enable and facilitate it so both of their lives get better. Um, most developers, when they hear the term legal stuff, they like they say like you know, they, if they've been involved in certain things, they sort of you know get really interested, and they're sort of senior enough they get interested. Um, a lot of the ones that are sort of like involved, it's like, oh, that's good, uh, go away. And so you've got this really interesting juxtaposition, um, but they both need each other, and we need to make it very easy for the developers to just do the right thing without thinking about it too hard. And. Each foundation has a different set of legal requirements. Like, you know, Apache says you must do this, FSF says you must do this. All these, um, you know, foundations have, you know, different standards that they want for their code bases. The trouble is we don't have anything that unifies it across. 
and so from a developer looking at it, it's, oh, I've got to go and read this whole long thing of slew to put a patch into this, a bug fix into this repository. Oh, I've got to read this whole long slew of things to put a bug fix in this repository. And I'm contributing under the terms of the license I'm going into, what does that all mean? And we're making it hard for the developers, so to some extent, it's just too much information coming at them to shut it down. So we need to simplify it, and we need to make it easy for them to just do the right thing and say, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with it going with them with the license it is, and oh, um, I want to use this pro I want to use this file from this project over here because it does what I want it to do. I don't want to reinvent the wheel. I want to reuse. I want to you know, go on to my next thing, and they move it over. And what's been happening has been people have been moving files from project to project without taking the licensing along with it, and we're, we're increasing the debt. So as you get composable systems, as you get new technologies on the software side, the, the licensing and isn't coming up. So we need to make it automated so it's part of the builds and CIs that every time you build something you get a rational set of um, you get the artifacts up to date. And that's what I mean by automating. So that you always know when you're working with the software what's really in it and what your obligations are. So you can comply with the intent of the authors and the licensing. Fantastic. Thank you, Kate. I see that the rest of our attendees have just swamped us and destroyed our studio. So let's wrap <laughs> it there.